Welcome to the second part we're going to talk a bit about adding secondary shapes. So in the actual tool that I built, I also spawned a couple of shapes underneath this as well. We want to get again the middle point and there are a few ways of doing this. I showed you one way here, but that's not the perfect middle point. So another way is doing the resampling again here. And instead of resampling by a length, we can also say specific amounts. Like if you type in two, we will now suddenly here have a point in the middle that's perfectly in the middle. And now what we can do with this is we can apply a transform. And the usually the point numbers will be very consistent. So zero and two will always be the outside. So we can type in zero, two, and we can just manually move this down. Uh, so here maybe I set this to points, so it shirts into point mode. Uh, and then we can have additional supporting, uh, I guess, shapes. So if I quickly now would merge this in the output, uh, we're not ready or we're not done yet with the shape, but to preview this, uh, you can see that we now, we now basically have these additional supporting uh, shapes, as you can see. And this is roughly what I want. So a few more things that we can uh, see is that this is actually not matching up with our actual shape and that is because of the soft transform we did here so we were moving um, our shape very little and maybe i'm going to copy the value copy parameter and what we need to do is we need to just do a general uh, transform here it could be here could be in another place as well but we just need to move it down by that amount so i copy pasted the value and i'm going to paste here that reference so now we are also moving this shape down and this now will work so now we are perfectly here hitting the middle so now if we would change the soft transform it will scale with it as well now now to actually then copy a shape on the lines we will do the same thing here with this deform node but um what i will do is before i will do that i will not do it in this loop i will do it somewhere else so i will make a group node to save this data and i will call this just lines and once we are done with my current loop, we can split this off with the split node and we can specifically look at our line group that we just made. So we can just here have these two shapes. And the reason why it's useful to have them separate now is because I can uh, do the random deletion again. Um, so here, if you want to randomly delete some of them, uh, we probably want to switch this to primitives again. Uh, we can now here start to delete some of them. I do probably, as you can see, maybe do a convert line. Here, here we are breaking it up by adding more points, but it's still one line. And at the beginning of our tool, we did the same thing where we just convert the line. And we will do the same thing here now as well uh, to move this into uh, two separate primitive chunks. So if we now go back to our uh, lines here, you can see we now have a way different result. And if I play around here with the randomization and we can now have some of these random lines here. We can do the same thing as before where we can loop over each of these primitives. So in our loop here, uh, we can now uh, do the same thing uh, like I did here. So we can use the shape and do a path deform. Now, if we actually use our shape like this, um, it's not going to work out. I probably want to cut my original shape in half and only cut, uh, paste that part. So as you can see, I want something that looks a bit more like this. Now I do see an issue where the rotation is not always what I would like to have. So if I could quickly merge the data here from my uh, the secondary with my main, uh, you can see that this, uh, like for example, this situation is working out really well. Um, so we have the bigger ship here and then the smaller ships here. But in some cases, it's not working out and we need to fix some rotation data for this. Uh, there are a few ways of doing this. I can quickly do it here is maybe a little bit strange, but I'm going to do a blast node and I will extract the correct version uh, from the two. So I will type in uh, one and then delete non-selected. And let's see if this is the correct version. So you can see that so you can see that this line is always correct. And what we need to do now with this line is basically rotate this line 180 degrees to be copy pasted on the other side again. So it's a little bit tricky or a bit uh, 
it's a little bit hacky way of doing it but it will work so what we need to do is just rotate as you can see that line to the other space now to do that we also need to set our pivot point so we can open here our pivot point location we need to get the point that is here in this case it's probably is always point zero so we can type in a point then we want to get the data from itself zero we want to get the point number zero and we would like to get the position and the x value and then we're going to copy paste this and we will paste this now into the y but we will need to type in one because we will get the x value uh, the, the y value and here we need to type in two so now the pivot here is this location and i can rotate this 180 degrees and we simply need to merge this data like so and continue like here and now if we remove everything we now see everything works like expected and i can here enable my random selection so again and then we start to have our bridge tool now then in the final result what i've done is i will did uh, an additional voxelization so mesh voxel and this will then remesh your geometry but of course we need to find a better value than the default one lower in size so it's a bit more high poly and probably maybe going even lower like so i do maybe want to use this setting here to dilute and erode so you can see that this definitely helps a lot and uh, maybe some smoothing can help here as well so you can see that now they are smoothed together we can also here enable project to original and you can see now we are starting to create these quite interesting shapes um so i would try to find a way to make sure it's interesting enough and maybe here apply that smoothing so you can see we create these, some interesting details here just by benefiting from the voxel we blend these shapes together and they look a bit like this now so they look a bit more interesting and that's basically how I created the base mesh for some of these bridges. Uh, of course, in Unreal, you do apply, like, of course, a fancy material with some nice textures and other details, but the shape is basically uh, what you see now here in Houdini.